Now, do you guys remember when we were solving? Um, remember solving linear equations? Solving linear equations, you just isolated the variable, and that was it. Use an inverse operation. Remember algebra one? That was fairly easy, right? Okay. Um, and and then later in algebra two, we kind of talk a little bit more about solving quadratics, where you had to now factor, right, and to solve. You had to set it equal to zero and factor and solve. That was the only way we could solve when we had two of the more two or more of the variables. But ladies and gentlemen, here we have a sine or a cosine. We can't solve for sine or cosine because we're going to have the other trigonometric function in the answer. Would you guys agree with me? So the only way to do a problem like this would be to set it equal to zero and factor. So let's set it equal to zero. Let's get this over there. And we get 2 cosine squared of x minus 3 sine of x equals 0. Well, in the last problem, it was pretty obvious how to factor. I mean, they had common terms, and you factored them out. Here, we don't have any common factors, do we? So we're kind of stuck. Like, what do we do now? And the only thing I can say is, look at your formula sheet and try to see if you can apply. Because anytime you see something squared, you should automatically think Pythagorean identities. So cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. That is a Pythagorean identity. Then I can just go ahead and rewrite this. Um, So I apply distributive property, and then I kind of rewrote everything. And then do you guys remember in that one factoring problem we did last class period when you had a negative? I said, I don't like factoring with negatives, right? So what I prefer to do, Sam, is I prefer to factor out that negative. So I'm left with 2 sine squared of x plus 3 sine of x minus 2 equals 0. Technically, I could divide that negative out, and it's not going to affect my answer. Now, some might say, well, what do I do here? Think of it in terms of x's. Just forget the signs. Treat them as x's. Okay. Now again, factoring. What did I say at the beginning of the year? We have to make sure we practice our factoring. So in this case, we can't factor anything out. So I have to have a, to get uh, my terms, I'm going to have 2x and x. And then my other two terms need to multiply to give me negative 2, but then add to give me a positive 3. So um, let's see, I could multiply by positive 2 here and minus 1 there. Would everybody agree if I did FOIL, I'd get the correct answer right there? Yes? Yes, question. The plus two. Yeah. Oh, so I did two times one is positive two. Yeah. Instead of writing it plus two, I just wrote it over there. Oh. Okay. I just like re I re I distributed and rearranged them in the same to kind of speed along my steps. So I kind of did two <laughs> steps in one. All right. Now I have my factored form. Guys, not the time right now. There's plenty of time for you guys to do it, not right now. I know, it's not, I, know, I want you just to be focusing, paying attention with this, because I don't want you to miss anything here. Um, that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that, just not when I'm explaining this. So now we have that factored form. So again, you can divide out the negative one, guys. Negative doesn't affect anything. So therefore, I have 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. I don't know why I put parentheses. And then sine of x plus 2 equals 0. So now I go ahead and solve. And I have sine of x equals 1 half. And the sine of x equals negative 2. Now we're trying to find all of the solutions. And one thing I can tell you guys is the sine inverse of negative 2. If you guys were to plug that, that's not within the domain of an inverse. If you guys type in sine inverse of negative 2, it's not within the domain of the inverse function. Because if you guys remember, 
I don't want to get too much in detail with this, but if you guys remember, the inverse sine of, of uh, sine was between negative 1 and 1. So if you're trying to find the inverse of a number that's larger than that's outside of negative 1 and 1, you're not going to be able to find the inverse of it. So there's no solutions right there. The only solutions we're looking at is with 1 half. And I'm not going to draw the unit circle here. X is going to equal 1 half here at, let's see, that's going to be pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Would you guys agree with me? I'll draw the unit circle. Here's my answer. This point is square root of 3, square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. That answer is pi over 6, right? The only other angle where sine would be pi over 6 is where the reference angle also is pi over 6. But what is that point? Negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Well, if that's pi over 6 short of, of pi, then that is 5 pi over 6, right? Because 6 pi over 6 would be halfway around the circle. So those are my two answers, and that's it. Um, if I was asked to find all the solutions, so that's my solution between 0 and 2 pi. All solutions, I would just have to add 2 pi to them. Because don't you guys agree with me? If I just add 2 pi, if I add 2 pi to each one of those answers, I'm always going to get coterminal angles. So Keith, what I would do is I would just write in x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Keith, you don't really need your phone out for this, so I would recommend not having that out. <laughs>